In Chemistry 20, you also titrated strong acids and bases in order to determine one or the other's concentration. A properly chosen acid-base color indicator was used because it could change the color of the solution at the point where a quantitative reaction occurred. Having a better background in acids and bases, we can take a closer look at how acid-base indicators work. This is phenolphthalein. In a solution where the pH is below 8.2, it is colorless. Notice these hydrogen atoms. In this form, phenolphthalein is a weak acid. As the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution decrease, as an acid, this molecule donates both hydrogen atoms to the solution. So producing the phenolphthalein conjugate base, which just so happens to evolve into a pretty pink color when the hydrogen ion concentration is above a pH of 8.2. Page 10 of your data booklet lists the acid-base indicators you may come across in this course. Generally speaking, you'll notice the Ka getting understandably smaller as the acid has an increasingly harder time to form its conjugate base. So as a color indicator, the larger Ka value means it will donate its hydrogen ions in a solution with already a fair amount of hydrogen ions. The smallest Ka means there has to be very few hydrogen ions in solution before the indicator gives up hydrogen and changes color. This titration curve taken from your text is typical when a strong acid is titrated with a strong base. When the Erlenmeyer flask contains only a certain volume of strong acid, the pH is very low. The gradual addition of base will change the pH, but not to the extent you would think. This is due to the buffering capacity of the water. We'll talk about buffers a little later. The moment when enough base has been added to completely react with all of the acid, there is a huge and rapid jump in pH. Since the pH of a strong acid strong base neutralization reaction is 7, choosing a color indicator that changes color at pH 7 is the way chemists can perform an experiment to determine what volume of base, in this case, will react with a measured volume of an unknown concentration of acid. Phenolphthalein doesn't change color at pH 7, but from 8.2 to 10. Methyl red will change color from 4.8 to 6. Bromothymol blue, not shown here, would be a better indicator because it changes color between 6 and 7.6. When you look at this titration curve, any of these indicators would seem to be suitable because the difference in volume of base added when the pH changes from 4 to 10 is so negligible as to not make any significant difference. However, chemists strive for accuracy, so an indicator that changes color at the midpoint of the vertical part of this titration curve is preferred. The curve shown here from your text Continue past the point where all the acid is reacted and so the resulting solution will be very basic. It's worth taking time to mention that while there's no lab skills requirement in this course, you are required to have knowledge of lab procedures. It would not be unreasonable to be asked to describe a titration experiment, for example. The lab equipment shown here is typical of such an experiment. The long glass tube with a tap on the end is the burette. It typically holds up to 50 milliliters. The burette contains an unknown concentration of solution. The volume of solution in the burette is read by looking at the base of the meniscus against the volume increments which are etched in the burette in one-tenth of a milliliter progressions, meaning the volumes are written in milliliters to two decimal places. The solution in the burette is added to the solution in the Erlenmeyer flask. This flask contains a precisely measured volume, usually from a pipette, of solution of known concentration, along with three or four drops of color indicator. The tap is opened and the contents of the burette pour into the Erlenmeyer flask, allowing the two solutions to react. 
the exact moment the solution in the flask changes color, the tap is shut off. If you add even one drop beyond this point, you have overshot and will get an erroneous measurement. The volume is read again from the burette and the two volumes are subtracted to reveal the exact volume of solution that was required to completely react with the solution in the flask. Typically, three or four trials will be performed at an average taken of the burette volumes. If a trial is different by more than 0.2 milliliters, then it is discarded as too erroneous. There is now enough information to stoichiometrically determine the concentration of the solution in the burette. This is a titration curve where the burette contains a strong base again, but the Earl of Meyer has a certain volume of weak acid. The initial pH is understandably higher than before, and the pH where all the acid has reacted following the addition of just the right amount of base is also higher. The reason for this is the weak acid partially ionizes and the conjugate base reacts with the water, itself a very weak acid, forming hydroxide ions. There are a couple of terms you should be aware of. The end point is the pH midway up the vertical point of the titration curve. Not all curves have such a pronounced point in the curve like this one here. Some just more look more like little bumps. So try to remember, strong acid, strong base, end point equals pH 7. Weak acid, strong base, end point equals pH greater than 7. And strong acid, weak base, the pH is less than 7. The equivalence point is the volume of titrant, that's the solution in the burette, that was added to the flask to reach the end point. I make the distinction, but be aware that many textbooks confuse the two. The titration curve showing the titration of a strong acid into a weak base shows the endpoint at less than pH 7. Knowledge of the approximate endpoints enables the choosing of an appropriate indicator. Remember endpoints are only achieved in the titration experiment when you're using a strong acid in a weak or strong base, or a strong base in a weak or strong acid. Not a weak acid with a weak base. We're looking for quantitative reactions producing clear endpoints, and weak acid-base combos don't provide that. What if the acid was diprotic, like sulfurous acid? The hydrogen atoms are not bound with the rest of the molecule with equal strength. That is, one hydrogen will be donated more easily than the second. This results in two quantitative reactions and indicated on a titration curve as having two endpoints.